Hi Gandhi class, it was so fantastic seeing you on our live session this morning and I am so impressed with how much knowledge you had to share with me about um, the science topic that we're looking at and that some of you were even giving me demonstrations using magnets that you had at home. So well done uh, and thank you for working so hard. So welcome to our second science lesson and our learning objective for this lesson is can I describe magnets as having two poles? So in yesterday's lesson, you were introduced to magnets. We saw what they looked like, what they do, and also looked at different shapes of magnets. Can you remember any of the shapes? Pause the video to have a think. Okay, so we've got the bar magnet, which is a rectangular sort of shape. The cylindrical magnet, which is a cylinder, a U-shaped magnet, which is in the shape of a U, the horseshoe magnet, which looks like a horseshoe, also looks very similar to the U-shaped magnet, but the two ends are closer to one another, a circular magnet, which is a small circular black magnet, and a ring magnet, which looks very similar to the circular magnet, but has a hole in the middle. Well done if you remembered any of those. So in today's lesson, we are going to be looking at the characteristics and the poles of magnets. So magnets are usually made of iron. They have two ends, which are called magnetic poles. They can attract some materials and they can also repel other magnets. Now I'm going to go into what the words attract and repel mean in just a moment. So the magnetic field is an invisible force which is within the end of the poles. So it's with just in the ends. When objects attract or repel, they can only attract or repel on the edge of the magnet where the poles are, not the whole magnet. So this bit here is not magnetic. It's just these bits. This is because this is where that hidden power or that invisible power is. It's in the end of the magnet. So here are some words related to this lesson. My turn, your turn. Magnet. Magnet. Now this is a stone or a piece of metal that attracts some other metals. My turn, your turn. Attract. Attract. Now this means to pull towards each other. My turn, your turn. Repel. Repel. This means to push away from each other. My turn, your turn. Poles. Poles. Now this is the end of the magnet, which you can see here. Now these paper clips are only going towards the end of the magnet because that is where the magnetism is. It's not within this bit. If you put the magnet in the middle, it won't stick or it won't be um, attracted to it. So magnet poles. Every magnet has at least one north pole and one south pole, which you can see on here. That's the south pole and that's the north pole. The blue end of a magnet is usually the south pole. The red, red end of the magnet is usually the North Pole. And sometimes, um, if we have a look at my magnet here, sometimes the South Pole isn't always blue, but it does always say whether or not it is South or it is North. When two magnets are close, they create a pushing or pulling forces on one another, which you can see here. These forces are strongest at the ends of the magnets and the, um, the two ends of the magnets are known as North Pole and South Pole. So as we said, the ends of the magnets. If you try to put two magnets together with, with the same poles pointing towards one another, the magnets will push away from each other. We say they repel one another. So let me show you. Here's a magnet. That's the South Pole there. There's another magnet with the South Pole. If I try and put them together, they push each other away. And it's the same if I do it with the North Poles. If I push them together, 
they push one another away, they're repelling one another. In this picture, two North Poles are pushing away from each other, they're repelling, and you can see the arrows are pointing them away from one another. If you put two magnets together with different poles pointing towards one another, the magnets will pull towards each other, and we're saying they attract one another. So if I get my North Pole and my South Pole, and I push them together, they attract one another. In this picture, a North and a South Pole are pulling towards each other, they're attracting each other, and we can see that because the arrows are pointing towards one another to say that they're being pulled together. So, these are my magnets, and I want you to have a think using what we've just learnt, which sides attract each other and which sides repel each other. Pause the video to have a think. Okay, let's have a go. So we'll try it out. Let's do north to south first and see if we are correct. So there's my north, there's my south. What do you think will happen? Will it attract or repel? Have a think. And well done if you got attract. They are attracting one another. Okay, the next one. South to north. Are they going to attract one another or repel one another? What do you think? Well done if you got attract, they have attracted one another. Okay, let's try north to north. What do you think is going to happen? Will they attract or will they repel? Have a think. And well done if you got repel, they're repelling one another. <laughs> and then last but not least, south to south. What do you think will happen? Are they going to attract or repel? Well done if you got that they are going to repel one another. Oh, yeah, they don't want to go next to each other. <laughs> so your task, you can pick um, one of the activities. Um, please make sure that you choose the one that is best suited to you. So activity number one, you need to draw a magnet and then label and colour the poles. Activity number two, you need to write down which magnetic force is taking place. Is it attracting or repelling? So here you've got A, is this attracting or repelling? Now what I would like for you to do is draw out this diagram and then tell me if it's attracting or repelling. B, is it attracting or repelling? Draw out the diagram and tell me what it's doing. And C, draw out the diagram and tell me what it's doing. Now activity number three, I want you to answer these questions. So why is one end blue and the other red? So you need to answer that question for me. What happens when you put the two blue ends together or the two red ends together? I want you to draw this and explain what's happening. And then the third part of that question is, what happens when you put a red and a blue end together? And again, I want you to draw this and explain what is happening. Please make sure you upload all of your work to Tapestry and I will see you next time, Gandhi class. Bye.